Although F9 has received mixed reviews since its release, users on Reddit have begun discussing the things they loved most about the movie. I'm trying to figure out. For now, let's just enjoy the moment. Are you huh? still alive? However, the majority of fans on the forum appear to have been satisfied after leaving the theater. Whether it's the humor or the usual speeding cars, there is an abundance of praise, with many arguing that things shouldn't be taken too seriously. The stunts and action scenes, Redditor PTS2. states that even though most of the stunts and action sequences defied common sense and physics, they are very enjoyable. It's indeed true that the movie has some cheesy action sequences. The Dodge Charger Hellcat's ridiculous slingshot across a ravine in Monte Quinto is one of the most bizarre action sequences in the franchise, but it's jaw-dropping nevertheless. And so is Dom flipping a 16-wheeler using a salon car. These scenes in the movie were made to top everything that had been done before, and they mostly succeed, making this particular installment a standout one. The nod to Brian O'Connor, at the end of the movie, Dom asks little Brian to pause, before saying grace, because someone special is about to join them. Brian O'Connor's Nissan Skyline then pulls up on the driveway. Cheekily named Redditor, and yet another USER. Singles this out as one of the best things about the movie. Although Brian can't participate in the heists anymore, fans can always feel his presence throughout the movies as the directors find ways to pay tribute to Paul Walker, who sadly passed away in 2013. Even though the family has grown large, with additions such as Deckard Shaw and Jacob now being included in the Toretto family, Brian is not to be forgotten, and that's what this scene is meant to emphasize. Dom and Jacob's Background Stories F9 explores the background stories of Dom and Jacob Toretto, with Vinnie Bennett and Finn Cole playing the younger versions of the characters. None of them look like the older versions of the characters, but Global Freak confesses to enjoying how grounded and touching their stories were. The 80s scenes are welcome breaks from the high-octane action. It's during these scenes that the movie is at its storytelling peak. The reason for the rivalry is explained in detail, making it easier to understand the rest of the plot. F9 has a scarcity of emotional moments but luckily, there is one at the start of the film, when young Jacob and Dom watch their father die in a car crash. The space mission plus everything related to Roman and Tej, Roman and Tej are the two best characters in the franchise, and they proved so again in this movie. The user singles out their banter for praise, especially Roman's analysis on the invisibility and immortality of the crew. The trip to space is also described as a strange and welcome high for the franchise. Rumors of the franchise heading to space seemed like a joke a few years ago, but it has finally happened. Though they depart Earth in a modified Pontiac Fiero, Roman, and Tej's Yuri Gagarin moment isn't as ridiculous as audiences assumed it would be. Credit to the two for having the best brotherly bond since Dom and Brian. I'm barely ready to go scuba diving in this old ass thing. Deckard Shaw's cameo in the post credit scene, the post credit scene unfolds beautifully. Someone is throwing fists at a punching bag only for the camera to then reveal that it's none other than Deckard Shaw. Then someone knocks. It's Han, and Shaw looks like he has seen a ghost. During its lengthy running time, the movie ignores its spin-off and two characters that helped make it popular, Luke Hobbs and Deckard Shaw. It's a relief to finally see Deckard. Han waiting so many years to confront Deckard is one of the things that don't make sense about F9, but fans are glad that his feud with Deckard is finally getting addressed. More of that is expected to play out in either Fast 10 or Hobbs and Shaw too. The focus on cars, it's indeed worth acknowledging that, while catering for casual fans, Fast 9 doesn't forget the real car lovers. Over 24 different models are featured. There is even a Dodge Charger Hellacious that was made specifically for the movie. The directors of the Fast and Furious franchise always choose expensive cars and switch them frequently. Ramsey's screen time, Ramsey is not just a hacker dealing with God's eye this time. She's involved in the action and even gets to be a driver too. While being a talented hacker still suits Ramsey, her involvement in the Edinburgh chase scenes provides comic relief, a burden that has previously been placed on Tedge and Parker. In a typical fast and furious way, she goes from not knowing how to drive to speeding through the streets. Given that the writers of the Fast and Furious franchise often neglect some of the best female characters, including Cipher, Ramsey's continued presence is definitely a necessity. Very natural. <laughs> John Cena's performance. On several occasions, the movies often see the villain reformed in some way, which happens with Jacob. 
Good Guy Cena is still as interesting as Bad Guy Cena. The WWE star has been slowly establishing himself as an action star. He has other major movies coming up, and his performance here makes fans look forward to what's in store next. There will always be comparisons with Dwayne Johnson, but Cena manages to differentiate himself by sticking to his strengths. You dad, huh? Fuck is your favorite? You don't know shit! The inclusion of the Tokyo Drift crew, Tokyo Drift characters Sean Boswell and Twinkie play a key role, helping Tedge and Roman set up their rocket car. Han's return is also a welcome surprise.